Today, Aviation Defense Universe is carrying out a special for the Army Day. In this series, we have Lieutenant General Dr. V. K. Saxena, former Director General, Army, Air Defense, and presently Distinguished Fellow of Vivekanand International Foundation. There are five books to his credit and six is the anvil. He has also written hundreds of papers for media and is still going on. Dr. Saxena, it is very commonly heard that the air defense obsolescence is of a very high order and uh, uh, I would like to know what is your view on the subject and what is the way forward. Uh, it is a fact that ground-based air defense has high degree of obsolescence. The popularly quoted figure these days is that our weapon systems are as much as 97% of society. When I wish to say that this figure is coming down steadily and today our obsolescence level still very high is about 82 to 84% thanks and courtesy to the induction of various types of sensors, battle management and control systems and various other weapon systems which are all indigenous. At the same time there is a forward movement in battle management and control system of Army Air Defense and together these will take down this obsolescence to further lower levels. Sir, tell me, why do be there so many guns and missiles in air defense system? Why can't one fit them all? <laughs> there is a very very popular question as to why spend so much on various types of guns and missiles, why can't one size fit all? Well, the one line answer to this question is, there is not one type of threat which is to be countered. There is multiple threat which is to be countered. My thoughts go back to 60s and 70s, when there was just a binary pair of a aircraft and a helicopter, which used to be the air threat vehicles. Today, you have mm, fourth and fifth generation aircrafts. Today, the aircrafts are not only the only threat vehicles. Today, you have attack helicopters. Today, you have dull, dirty and dangerous unarmed aerial system. Today, you have cruise missiles. Today, you have surface to surface missiles. Today, you have <coughs> anti-radiation missiles. And not only that, what about the magic of stealth? The magic of stealth, the magic of invisibility. Today, the stealthy aircrafts with their superior avionics and weapon system can cause huge devastation without getting detected for a long time and not only hard kill weapons today the soft kill weapons in terms of lasers in terms of charged particle beam in terms of high power microwave are slowly making an entry laser is a reality today now to counter such multi domain multi dimensional and multi platform threat you require various types of weapon systems why because the threat has to be punished successively and seamlessly. What does it mean? It means that the threat has to be detected at long range and successively punished till the time it keeps coming towards its intended target. Now if such a fire, long fire arm is required, not a single surface to air missile or a gun is effective across this entire range. So what happens? You require different types of surface to air missiles and guns which are effective in their own range and height envelope and deploy them in multiple rings, in, in overlapping rings. Such a deployment is called layered and tiered defense. Such a deployment can bring successive fire onto the threat. And also such a fire has to shift seamlessly from one weapon to other, from aircraft to long range missile, to medium range missile, to short range missile and to the gun system. Now all this cannot be done by a single fit weapon system because no weapon system will be effective all across. You require a weapon systems, a family of ground-based ready weapon systems. This family has stored air defense guns, 
very short range air defense system 6 to 10 kilometers you have short range system like akash about 20 to 25 kilometers medium range up to 100 kilometers and long range beyond 100 kilometers not only these weapons they have to be controlled by a proper battle management and control system in air defense it is called control and reporting system for detection of the threat for selection of the weapon for control of air defense engagement which is minute to minute is all a matter of great precision that is the reason you require different types of guns and missiles in air defense very well explained sir and very well summarized thank you uh, sir uh, what is the vulnerability of uh, integrated battle groups which is now the thought of the day as far as uh, air defense system is concerned yeah again a very pertinent question sir the integrated battle groups as we all know is now the talk of the day and it has already been battle tested in the western front as well as on the northern front and as per the statement in the media it is likely to be operational by 2020s now my question is that this integrated battle groups have to survive the next day how will they survive if they have to fight in the tactical battle area a heavily mechanized elements of the IBG will be vulnerable to three main threat vehicles what are those three threat vehicles the first type of threat vehicle which they will be vulnerable to will be the anti-tank guided missiles, anti-tank weapons and anti-tank missiles which can be fired from ground as well as from air. This is one type of threat which they will be vulnerable to. Such threat can come from deadly attack helicopters today. You are aware that Pakistan has got Huey Cobra, it has got K-series of uh, attack helicopters. China is as it is a very advanced power in state of the art attack captors which their attack captors is wing loom cassie they are comparable to the predator class the top of the line now this is one threat second type of threat is the multi-role aircrafts now when you talk about the attack helicopters one point to be remembered is that these are the type of threats which are the vehicles they can come map of the earth flying they can come behind the obstacle they can just suddenly appear and take on the target now what about the missiles the anti-tank guided missiles can be Fire and forget can be infrared homing, can be also laser fire guided. At the same time, you can also have aircrafts coming. Now, what is required to protect the IBGs from this major threat? Three types of weapons are required. First types of weapons are those which can keep pace with the mechanized element of the IBG. In air defense parlance, these weapons are called air defense guns and missile system, ADGM system. We have two types of ADGM system, you are aware, Shilka weapon system and Tahushka weapon system. And you must have read in the media that the uh, Defense Acquisition Council has already approved the acquisition of K-30BO from South Korea. Now these are three types of weapon system which need to be integrated with the IBGs for initial and intimate protection. Next is not only this is not enough. What about the protection from the flanks? What about the protection from the um, uh, areas or from the avenues from the attack or avenues of attack with any aircraft? We need to proliferate the tactical battle area with very short range man portable missiles. Now these are the missiles which are the need of the day to day. They are called V-Strat missiles like Igla 1S, like RBS-70, like Mistra, like Strasky, 6 to 10 kilometer range, 3 to 10 kilometer altitude. They are the ones which take on opportunity targets like attack helicopters, like uh, aircraft and so on. And the third type of weapon system which is required for the ABG, the RBGs are quick reaction surface to air missile. This is a special class of a weapon. Why is, why is it so special? It is special because of three characteristics. First of all, while it is moving along with the IBG or the mechanized column, it can carry out detection and surveillance of airspace and track the target to be fired. Number two, it can halt and immediately draw fire onto them. And thirdly, it can track multiple targets to draw fire on the target which is most threatened or most threatening or most priority. Now talk of these three weapons. Now most important is not where do you require weapons, where are we? Today, our Shilka weapon system is getting upgraded, only a small quantity. My point through this media I wish to communicate that the entire Shilka lot needs to be upgraded. The Tangushka weapon system needs to be kept on. And k 30 bo which is on the anvil, should come as early as possible. Come to Vishorai. 
Now we should open system as you are aware that a long standing case of 2010 is going on and today the Defence Acquisition Council on 27th November 2018 has already approved the IGLA S as the lowest bidder. We must go ahead and procure it as a trial service procurement. Today we require it for the IBG. Today we require it for the survivability of the IBG. Talk, talk of QRSAM. I am not talking of the QRSAM of the world like MBD has got MICA. The Israelis have got Derby, the Thales have got VTK, and Russians have got Tor. Uh, Tor. I am talking about our own QR Sam, our own QR Sam Bell. DRDO has designed, Bell has produced. There have been 19 fire successful fire tests which have taken place. It is for the country now to move this weapon system from the scientists to the users. And these three weapon systems which I talked about. The air defense guns and gun missile system like Shilka, Tangushka, K-30BO, Vishrat system as well as the QRSAM all must be procured at a fast pace so that the IBGs not only fight, they fight to survive the next day. I think very well summed up sir. Thank you. Yes. And uh, yeah, since you talked about uh, DRDO and uh, yeah, Bell, uh, the point comes up. How does Make India concept, Make in India concept fit in air defense? Sir, when I was a director general, I used to be called the indigenous general because I always believed that jo apna hai, wo sabse utam hai. Chahe it compares a little unfavorably with the top of the world because whatever is yours will remain yours. Today, I am very proud to say in the three verticals of Army Air Defense, sensors, shooters and battle management system, Make in India is in a large fashion. In the sensors today I can count three dimensional tactical control radar, the low level lightweight radar, the Rajendra class of radar, the today the LRD, the electronic radar division of, uh, which is in Bangalore, DRU, has got the capability to design every type of fire control radar, tactical control radar and battle management control system which can fit the army. Talk of the weapon system. Now the weapon system today, I talked about QRSAM, it is our own. I am very proud to tell you that on 5th May 2015, I was the proud general to induct the Akash weapon system into Indian Army, into Army Air Defense. And today Akash is a success story. So talk of SRSAM, Akash weapon system. Talk of QRSAM, Bell has made today. And of course the MRSAM which is coming through a JVM, always say, now, I always say, why not we should have? You, are, you may be aware that BDL has got a, um, a setting up a we should have making facility in Amravati at the cost of 300 crores. The Thales has got a, uh, Thales and BDL have got a MOU mm -hmm. with Star Street of UK to get their technology. I say, make your own weapon system. And what about battle management and control system? I am very proud to say again that in conjunction with the Air Force Integrated Air Command and Control System called IHCCR, the Army's indigenous Akashti and the Navy's Tribune Battle Management and Control System are something which is our own, which is designed by Bell. It may not be the world's best, it may not be the top of the line, it may have faults and fault lines and problems, but tomorrow and the day is not far when we have our own flawless battle management and control system. So what I wish to tell you, the sensors, the shooters and the battle management and control system all have a high degree of indigenous and today I must say the ground based air defense celebrates make in India like no other arm. Apna hai to? Apna hai to sacha hai. Apna, Apna hai to rehega. So my last question to you, I think it's been very interesting and educative uh, talk. I want to have your brief comments on Air Defense Command. Oh, Air Defense Command is the talk of the day today, sir. I am very proud to say as the Air Defense Ghana and I must thank my chief for that and my CDS for that. That is the very first day of taking over on 1st in January 2020. He has asked the headquarter ideas to prepare a proposal for Air Defense Command. I wish to tell you here that Air Defense Command is nothing new. We have been discussing it for a very long time in various professional forums and conferences, seminars, workshops and so on. What is it? What is it? The most important thing is, it accumulates the air defense capability of the nation under one color and one banner.
But here is a point of caution. Air defense is a very peculiar arm. Here, you are aware of the Union War Book, which lays down the role of all the ministries, headquarters, arms and services during armed conflict. It has laid down very clearly that the responsibility of the air defense of the Indian national airspace is that of the Indian Air Force. That position is unambiguous. But air defense is, does not end there. It is a larger connotation. And what is the connotation? Connotation is that when the armed enemy prosecutes the air threat, he does not see service boundaries. He can cause damage, destruction, both at land, at sea, at air, on army, on navy, on air force, on strategic assets of the country. Therefore, while the responsibility is unambiguous, each service, army, navy, air force, have got their integral air defense and weapons, which are not only unique, they are suited to the battle space and they are required to provide air defense protection with the service specific assets. Now, this is something like the, the Trishul of Lord Shiva. If you see the Trishul of Lord Shiva, it has got three arms. Now, these three arms have got their individual killing capability. If one arm gets stuck in my heart, I will die. But all the three arms are welded, are cast together in one weapon. Similarly, the air defense has got Army, Navy, Air Force has got their individual uniqueness and core competency. Both these words are important, uniqueness and core competency. Air defense command has to come up in such a manner, such a manner that the uniqueness of each service, number one, as also the core competency of each service. Now talk about Tagushka, I was talking about Tagushka. Talk of QRSAM, talk of a weapon system like Strela. Army has got a Strela weapon system, 5 km ring, required, it's on a tank chassis. It required to protect the field force. It moves along with the tank in the front row and protects that. That's army competence. Go to any battle line ship today. You will be surprised that the Navy has got tremendous amount of air defense weapon system in terms of best of sensors, best of weapons in aircrafts, guns, missiles and battle and battle control systems. Air Force has got huge number of missiles, got Eagle, has got Pichora, has got QR, and got Derby. It's got division of aircraft. It also has a country level integrated air command and control system. So each service is one vertical, one vertical, one vertical. The force of the air defense command is to integrate the air defense capability of the nation into one cumulative capability. And it should be the responsibility of the air defense command for the air defense of the Indian India, for the air defense of India. And this responsibility is to be executed by the three arms. For example, Andaman Nicobar Command. For example, Strategic Forces Command. Now, Andaman Nicobar Command, Strategic Forces Command, the overall responsibility, responsibility of the air defense command is the air defense of the nation. It does this responsibility with the arm, the air force, with the navy, with the with the army. Weapon systems are combined as an integrated whole, as a cumulative punch of the Indian national air defense capability. Many points are there. When air defense command comes up, many of the cases which are today having service calls or today having some sort of a delay once on, will become air defense command cases. They will push them. Also, today the service level perception of air defense will become nationalist perception of air defense. Like they say, if this is the only a finite pie of resources. The Air Defense Command will decide that today, which is the most threatened threat. Like sir, some experts will make us believe, sir, uh, northern, in northern border, hypersonic weapons are coming in a great deal. Therefore, put resources in making hypersonic defense. No. Air Defense Command will say, what is the threat? When it is likely to mature? When I am going to act upon it? No, I will not waste my resources at this point in time on this threat, which I will write to take on the mechanized forces protection. I would like to take on IBGs for protection. I like to take on airfield protection. I like to take on protection of the fleet at sea. I will require those weapons. So from service level Prioritize. prioritization become national level prioritization. Also Air Defense Command will be give an institutional platform for the definition of the air threat. What is the air threat? Air defense, air threat drives air defense. It's like it's like cause effect. To every sword there is a shield. Air threat is a sword. Air defense is a shield. Now that sort of today what air threat is being defined by a number of multiple agencies. They are classified. I won't divulge here. 
but tomorrow your defense command will say this is my net assessment cell this will keep the air threat current from our potential adversaries at 24 7 interval and therefore 24 7 and therefore anybody who wants to take a cue from what is the threat to us from the enemy air from the adversaries there, here it is and if this is so what are the weapons required what needs to be protected at the national level so it is the nationalistic flavor of air defense which will come in air defense command without destroying without destroying what two things uniqueness uniqueness and core competency uniqueness and core competency of individual service remember i told you the trishul of launch three arms each having your own individual kill capacity but together forming the maha trishul the maha weapon of Morena. We had a very illuminating talk from Lieutenant General Dr. V.K. Saxena. The, air de the Aviation Defense Universe is extremely grateful to you, sir. Thank you, Thank you very much. Thank you, sir.